This past week struck a passionate divide in Washington on a bill to force the sale of TikTok away from its 20% Chinese ownership. The bill is not a ban. It forces foreign adversaries, including Chinese communists, to divest. This is not an attempt to ban TikTok. It's an attempt to make TikTok better. Tic-tac-toe. A winner. A winner. Some of us just don't want the president picking which apps we can put on our phones. They use geolocation data targeting minor children to then force them to call congressional offices. This influence campaign illustrates the need for this bill. But in a rarity usually reserved for sports teams or perhaps Taylor Swift, this divide wasn't a cross-partisan aisle at all. The House passed this bill with only 50 detractors. And with Rand Paul, potentially the lone voice standing in its way of passing the Senate, Biden says he's ready to sign it. Mr. President, do you still support banning TikTok? Would you sign that bill? If they pass it, I'll sign it. So what about this bill is so concerning that it's got Thomas Massey and Ro Khanna to agree? Or better yet, Matt Gates, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and the entire squad. Perhaps it's something as simple as freedom. Our freedom to see and read and consume ideas, no matter how damaging or provably false. And as Americans, we still do fancy ourselves as free. I personally think TikTok is a dangerous influence on our youth and those that are willfully ignorant. So I spent the past few days reading this bill line by line, hoping to see a sturdy set of guardrails to keep the government's power in check while eliminating what might well be the most effective Chinese attack on our future to date. I found this bill gives our president the power and responsibility to force applications that are owned by or in coordination with a foreign adversary to divest or sell their shares of the company. The list of prohibited countries found in Title 10 is short, and it does seem it takes an act of Congress to expand that list or reduce it. So perhaps this bill is safe. But is that really the issue we should be debating as Americans? Are we in a post-COVID world so conditioned to letting our government control our minds and lives that we don't see their actions as intrusive so long as they can't intrude too much? Most of those promoting this bill say it's necessary to keep our children from being corrupted. Is that true? Are we so unsure or inept at parenting that we're willing to relinquish our responsibility to a nameless agency or a partisan president? Is that who we really want filtering our lives, our children's lives? As Jordan Peterson says, parenting is watching your kids do dangerous things carefully. That's how they learn. So a few months back, when people were calling for the infamous bin Laden letter to be banned, the Daily Mail eventually pulled it down in response. I, as an injured Afghanistan veteran, spoke out passionately against such an idea. Have we given up so willfully on our fellow Americans that we can't trust them to read an evil terrorist best pitch for murder and see through it? Call me an optimist on freedom or perhaps the ultimate pessimist on friendly tyranny, but I say freedom is always worth the risk. And perhaps the hardest truth of all, if we abdicate our personal responsibility to seek out and share truth, we've abandoned freedom altogether. Kennedy, as the, uh, I guess, libertarian on the panel, I'd love your reaction to this bill. No, I, I thought uh, what you just delivered there was absolutely spot on. And we should always err on the side of freedom. And we should always look at any legislation, particularly that that gives the government more power very skeptically. And, and you saw an impassioned speech from uh, Thomas Massey. He's a congressman from Kentucky. And he was saying his problem with it is there's no sunset in it. There is no there's no term limit to this bill. Yeah. That means that, yes, the president can decide if there is a foreign adversary, which is very poorly defined in the bill. And that could be a person. That could be a company. China is a very big place. Also, how is China going to retaliate against American companies or American companies? who manufacture in China, there are a lot of them. It's easy to say, don't make things in China. But for companies who've been doing it for a long time, they want to have the freedom to make those decisions. It is putting too much power in the uh, surveillance state and taking it away from Congress. It's surprising that they're giving up more of their power at this point. It is surprising. Uh, Lisa, I want to read this uh, article. It's an excerpt uh, from Racket News by Matt Taibbi. He says, while the TikTok ban is so dangerous... Did they tell you the part about giving the president sweeping new powers? In the quote, he says, you'll find the real issue in the fine print. A, quote, foreign adversary controlled application, in other words, 
can be any company founded or run by someone living at the wrong foreign address or containing a small minority ownership stake, or it can be any company run by someone, quote, subject to the direction of either of those entities, or it's anything the president says is vague enough. So what he's getting at is that they really, in this bill, don't drill down what a foreign adversary is or how an application has to be connected to that foreign adversary. To me, it feels like it leaves the door wide open. So I have a ton of different thoughts, and I'm not. I, I'm a little bit of a mixed bag on this issue, to be perfectly honest. Like I don't think we're as free as we, we think we are. I mean, we saw that during COVID when the government tried to force Americans to get a vaccine Absolutely. that has been proven to be dangerous for some people and failed to meet the expectations, shut down businesses, uh, you know, and, and also we saw Twitter sway the election in 2020, the FBI sway the election in 2016, right? So we're not as free as we, we think we are. China is obviously a national security threat, but they have captured so much of America. They've captured our politicians. They've captured industries. We saw the NBA bend the knee to China not too long ago. We know that American companies are buying goods produced in China by slave labor. Um, you know, they're buying up our farmland or in, in, our, in our higher education on universities and colleges. So, uh, you know, we've been captured by China. I also think a lot of these politicians are, you know, hypocrites. Joe Biden's on Twitter, right? Um, <laughs> TikTok. TikTok. Gosh, I am so tired today. TikTok. Kennedy, yeah. you're a lifesaver today. High five. So, you know, I, I don't know. But they, so I, I, I don't know where I come down on this, to be perfectly honest. I mean, you guys know me. I'm typically someone who has really strong opinions on everything. And I've been debating this in my head all day long. So I, I don't know. I, I see a little bit of both sides. I don't know what the solution is, to be perfectly honest. I don't know is the bravest thing you can say in that chair. And I appreciate you for it. Uh, this might be the only time I've ever <laughs> said that. <laughs> Griff, you're at the border. You see the people that come across. 20,000, 30,000 Chinese immigrants coming across. There is a China problem. But is this how we solve it? Look, this is why Washington is a total joke. First of all, President Biden is saying he'll sign this bill if it gets to his desk, knowing there's 170 million people on TikTok. He is not going to have a single young person voting for him mm. if he gets rid of TikTok. Because guess what? It's digital crack for young people. Yeah. I got on TikTok, in full disclosure, during COVID because my daughters, who were teenagers at the time, were on there. And I loved your monologue because it's exactly what you have to do. It's different than when my parents raised me. It, we're a digital frontier, and you got TikTok out there. So you got to really do it. And I think anytime you look at giving broad, sweeping powers to an executive office through legislation, you really got to think twice about it. Kennedy touched on that a little bit, and I don't think this is going anywhere, but the discussion's an important one to have, even if it fails. Well, and we're having it. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.